Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Kingston Police Commission. Uh, we're going to give folks uh, one more second uh, to uh, log on uh, before we officially get started. Uh, so just bear with us for a moment. All right, um, looks like we've got a quorum of our commissioners here. And so I do think that we will um, get started with the, at least the beginning announcements here. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, here uh, for our March uh, Police Commission uh, meeting. Uh, today is March 17th, 2021. Um, I am uh, Mayor Steve Noble. Uh, I'm joined by commissioners Brad Jordan, uh, Minion Dejanet, and Shiniqua Bowden. Um, and uh, Commissioner Mapes uh, couldn't be here uh, today. And so uh, with that, um, I would like to officially call this meeting to order. Uh, and our first um, business uh, of the day would be to approve uh, the minutes or approve the virtual meeting um, from our last meeting. Uh, so do I have a motion uh, to approve uh, that at this time? So moved. Uh, thank you, Brad. Do I have a second? Second. Second. <laughs> thank you, uh, Shuniqua. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, excellent. So um, thank you all very much for that. Um, I, I guess I was supposed to do public comment first. So I uh, uh, I don't know, Minya, I'm sorry about that. I don't know if there is uh, actually anyone scheduled for public comment this evening. No, there, there isn't. And so uh, we did receive um, uh, two um, complaints related to a, one situation that we'll be reviewing today in executive session. Uh, we also did receive a letter of appreciation um, for our files, um, which was shared with all of the commissioners. Uh, and uh, I think other than that, I don't think we had any other public comments come our way since the last meeting. And so, um, Chief, I'd like to have you do your report. Um, and if there's any communications that you wanted to share with us on your end, um, then that'd be great. Uh, sure, just a, a quick update. We have the uh, three recruits in the uh, part-time academy uh, locally. We're doing well. Uh, we also have one down at the Rockwood School for the phase two. They, uh, he entered the uh, phase two uh, firearms portion of it right now. He's doing well as well. And uh, Dylan, our latest uh, hire, uh, just started on field training as well. And um, he's already, as being a certified police officer, it's going to be the easiest uh, trainee to get through since he's already certified as a field training officer, going through field training. But he's going to be on the receiving end of it this time. So we're looking forward to having them all back and uh, working. Great. Um, you yeah, have more? I do. I'm sorry to tell us in between. Yeah. Uh, we also have some retirements coming up uh, to this month uh, within a week of each other. Uh, the first one being the retirement of Officer Michael Ryan. Uh, Mike Ryan came on in 1996, in March of 96, he's retiring. Uh, this month on the 22nd is his last day here. Uh, Mike came from, to us from the Sheriff's Office. Uh, many years ago and uh, has been an incredible asset to this department, uh, served in the Air Force, uh, has been an emergency services member in his entire career here, and also an instructor for the police academy as a well as in service. So we, uh, we're sorry to see him go. It's uh, hopefully a new chapter in his book that he's got to start writing, but uh, he was phenomenal. I worked side by side. Mike and I actually went to high school together in Altiora, and uh, he has been uh, not only a friend, but an incredible police officer here. So. You should be commended on that. The, uh, the second one is uh, going to be the retirement of Deputy Chief John Wallace. And uh, he is uh, uh, coming to an end of his career as well. He started with us in 1983 in April, uh, coming from the town of Rosendale. 
Uh, he's gone up through the ranks in, in 88. He was promoted to detective in 91, sergeant, 92, detective sergeant, 93, detective lieutenant, 2001, deputy chief, uh, where he served this uh, department until his retirement, effective retirement date of the 26th of March. So uh, he'll be in uh, a few days next week, not many, but uh, he does count the time off. So uh, he, is, uh, he will be sorely missed. He has been truly a, not only a friend, but a, a actual uh, someone who I can go to for advice. He has institutional knowledge and a man who has a level head and uh, served in many capacities in this department and, and uh, will be sorely missed. Thank, thank you, Chief. And uh, if I could just say, uh, you know, John Wallace has definitely um, been someone that I, I've gotten to work with uh, during my time here. And uh, uh, he has been uh, nothing but a, a stable partner uh, in the work that we're doing. And um, I just uh, want to wish him, uh, you know, well in his retirement. And uh, we uh, appreciate, um, you know, all of the work that he's done uh, for the department. And uh, for helping keep you, um, you know, uh, grounded. Yes, grounded. <laughs> that's the right word. Um, so uh, that's uh, so it's going to be big shoes to fill, which we at the at the commission will have to uh, discuss in, in in the month or two ahead. So we did uh, we did have the three lieutenants take the deputy chief's exam as a promotional. Uh, we're just waiting on the results at that point. So just to find out who's, uh, who scores. I anticipate that all three of them will do well. They always have. They're essentially, you know, confirmed test takers. They've worked up through the ranks from sergeant to lieutenant, so, um, and all, you know, very active members. Uh, you know, we have patrol lieutenant uh, Cliff Trepper, protective lieutenant Terry Gogier, and uh, administrative lieutenant Mike Bond, so you know, running, and they all have just taken the test last week. So it was good. Um, looking forward to filling that spot. We are all working on background investigations right now for a number of candidates. Um, we will end up probably hiring two that do not have the academy uh, of this next group. None of them have the academy. So um, the next police academy will be ours that starts in August, first week of August. So uh, there's gonna be some timeline adjustments to figure out. Um, and in addition to that, we may have another retirement coming up depending on what happens um, this next month. There's a determination by uh, one of the officers to uh, actually may, who may be retiring from the department Hasn't, hasn't gotten the numbers back from the retirement board yet, but uh, certainly uh, leaning on that. But uh, there may be a, a few more vacancies coming up. And uh, I ask that the commission consider replacing them as soon as possible. Uh, we really need to get these body, this, uh, you know, body replacement in line, uh, knowing that there may be a few candidates uh, in the 80 group that are certified police officers or at least have the, the first phase pre employment and then we can put them through phase two in July. So, It'll be like we've been the challenges we've had before with finalizing the timelines and figuring out who's who. Um, and as, as all of you well know, that in addition to having offered the commission employment, then we still have to do the psychological, the polygraph, and the medical exam as well. So uh, there's quite a bit going on, but our detectives are doing the uh, background investigation. Yeah, great. Um, and Chief, uh, about 15 minutes ago, um, uh, you. We, uh, we recognize that there was an incident that occurred. Um, could you just give what you can publicly for anyone that's listening in that may be wondering what's happening on Broadway? Yeah, on Broadway? Uh, yeah we, uh, we ended up shutting down Broadway. Um, it's currently still shut down. Uh, between East Chester Street and Foxhall Avenue, we had a report of a, a shot fired. Uh, there was an individual taken transported to the hospital right now. I'm not sure of the status at this point, uh, but there was a gunshot wound. Um, and uh, well, the detectives right now are on the scene trying to figure out what happened. So interviews, canvases, and so on. Uh, we're not really sure um, what the status of it is yet. I just got up the phone to the detective lieutenant. He told me everything he knew. Great. All right. Thanks for that update, Chief. Um, so, and there's some other issues with staffing that I know we're going to also talk about in an executive session. And so, um, but thank you for that update related to the retirements and uh, the potential hires. hires. Um, there are, uh, I think, a couple of uh, items in unfinished business that we can talk about briefly. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I wanted to just uh, uh, thank uh, Minya for in terms of uh, gathering some information related to our uh, social media policies that have occurred uh, in other police departments. Um, and I think that this is something we, um, you know, uh, have had, uh, you know, in our, um, you know, 
uh, something that since last month we've all been thinking about and talking about. And I personally really like San Francisco's um, policy statement that they place on their Facebook page. And uh, um, I think that, you know, if we can, um, I'd like to kind of work off of that um, for next month so that we can kind of build an actual policy statement that could be included, um, you know, on our Facebook page and that we can then instruct any of the users of our Facebook page that, you know, this is our new policy and we can, you know, have kind of a mini training, just like we talked about with Lexapol. Um, you know, it's important that if we do adopt new policies that we also have a training program to kind of go along with it um, so that everyone also understands the intent of, you know, the language and uh, how to use it. And so I think that um, that work, uh, if it's okay with everyone, I'd like to kind of continue working on that. But I personally felt as though, you know, San Francisco's policy seemed like it really was, easy to relatively understand uh, from the public side, but also uh, I think easy for our staff to implement on our side um, as well. So I, uh, I thank you, Minya, for your work on that. Um, and I think uh, the next thing that we talked about last month that um, unfortunately due to, um, as you guys have heard some of the staffing, um, you know, to, Departures. Uh, it has been uh, a little crazy, to be honest, for Mike Bonds, our lead training officer, to kind of get all of uh, KPD's in-service training up and running at the exact same time that we're asking him to do training for us. Um, and so that work, that plan is coming. Um, I know we talked about how we would do that uh, ourselves, uh, both after our commission meeting uh, for one session and then uh, another meeting a month. Um, but I, I'll be honest, we, we just haven't been able to get everybody um, to set dates yet. But it, it is something that's on our radar. And um, I, I hope that by the time we're meeting next month, we'll have a full calendar um, that will work for everyone's schedule um, for the end of spring and summer months um, so we can get some of this training started. So. If I could, Mayor, uh, just a, a quick update. You mentioned training. So we did finalize the in-service training calendar. Uh, we do. Uh, Co-train, uh, cooperatively work together during training with the town of Ulster. I've spoken to Chief Bardi as well. Uh, the agenda for the three-day training that we have set aside for the officers is gonna be de-escalation, uh, legal updates, use of force, um, first aid, CPR. Uh, we're trying to get that done as well as a day of firearms and a day of defensive tactics. And we felt that, that this right now, we don't really know what's certain as far as what's gonna be required training as, as part of the lead vision task force. And, there may be suggestions about additional procedural justice or um, a little bit more professional policing courses or so, but we felt that this is necessary to get in, especially for the accreditation standards. We can, we can kind of check them off the box. Um, but on this one, we are gonna introduce de-escalation, legal updates. And when I mentioned use of force, in addition to the actual hands-on program with defensive tactics, or what's been traditionally called defensive tactics, um, the use of force, there, there are all the 40 mechanisms in place that we have to make sure we maintain with the state. And uh, we have to make sure the officers are aware that anytime they draw their weapon or so on, that, that they're actually documenting that and they're aware that, that that has to be documented. So we come up with a new use of force report and uh, it should simplify things for us and the state because we are required. To okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, and I think our new business type item for this month, um, we actually had talked about, um, you know, uh, setting up a, an opportunity for us to, uh, if you remember, uh, last year, we held kind of a, a public information session, um, or at least attempted to hold a public information session um, using Zoom uh, to be able to interact with the public, answer questions, um, and to kind of have a, a, a clear opportunity opportunity for us to be able to explain kind of the work of the commission and how we operate and what we do. And so I think as a commission, um, now that we have Zoom webinar as a, a tool the city uses, which we just started using this January, um, it is a kind of a, an upgrade from even what we're using right now for our Zoom meeting, which allows uh, question and answers, uh, people to raise their hand, um, us to be able to um, uh, manage uh, who can be muted and unmuted and who has video and who doesn't have video. Uh, and so it's a really um, great tool. Uh, and I think uh, speaking to some of the commission members, we think that um, setting an opportunity for us as a commission to again, um, welcome the public into um, a format where they can ask us questions about our roles. Uh, this will make it so much better and much more manageable. And so I would um, ask that, um, you know, 
when we send out an email asking for a date uh, from you for this, this is what it's all about. And I think that um, we, uh, we think we have a, a, a good plan now on how to make it all work and work well for the public and for, and for all of us. So uh, that will be coming. Um, and uh, I hope that we will be able to do this this spring um, so that we can have um, you know, a, a, a town hall for the police commission. Uh, and I do think that during the re-envisioning work, more people learned about what the police commission does and what we don't do um, and what we can do and what our, our roles are. But I would like to kind of expand that out to maybe our, our broader community uh, and to just let people know, you know, why we're here, what our role is, and um, just so they get to know us a little bit better as a commission. Does that sound like that makes sense to everybody? Okay, um, so I think um, with that, I, that is the end of our uh, public agenda for tonight. Uh, we do have uh, both uh, a complaint that we received or two complaints related to one incident um, that we're gonna review in executive session. Uh, and there's also some staffing changes that the chief would like to talk to us about, um, about some ideas that he has um, uh, related to all of uh, the retirements and things. So uh, I'd like to cover those um, you know, in, uh, executive session. And so if I could, I'd, I'd like a motion to uh, enter into executive session to discuss those issues um, at this point. Move. All right, thank you, Minion. Do you have a second? Second. Thanks, Brad. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, um, great. So we'll, um, we'll see everyone um, over in the executive session link. Thank you.